remember back on my review of Run Like Hell, where I said Capcom didn't give the big green any survival horror love? Well, I was sort of wrong. When the Xbox was first released, one of the games to come out for the first wave of titles was an updated version of a new franchise originally started on PlayStation 2, Genma Onimusha. Now, is this the better port, and is it collection worthy? Time to find out today on Viridian Flashback. Set in the era of feudal Japan, you play as Samonosuke, who is on his way to see his cousin, Princess Yuki, when she is kidnapped by the force of Nobunaga, a fallen warlord resurrected by demons, to be used as a sacrifice in a ritual to take over the land. I will save Princess Yuki. Samonosuke. Wake up, Samonosuke. After being given a powerful gauntlet by the Oni, Samonosuke sets off to defeat Nobunaga, save Yumi, and free the land from darkness. With your current power, you are not capable of destroying our demons. We will give you our powers. We are the clan of Orgus that has been subverted by the demons. Semenosuke, defeat and seal their souls to your right hand. What? Destroy all the demons! Story-wise, Genma Onimusha is pretty good with a plot blending historic Japanese lore with a fantasy horror element, and pulls it off quite nicely. But I'm sure a lot of you knew this already, so let's just get straight to the gameplay. Genma Onimusha is a third-person survival horror game, very similar to Resident Evil, right down to those tank controls that old-school gamers never forget, progressing through the game by killing monsters, solving puzzles, and backtracking. Lots of backtracking. Just like Resident Evil. For the most part, you'll play as Sam, but in some sections you'll control his partner Kaide. While slaying the demon horde, you see different color orbs that fly from them that you can collect with your gauntlet. Red to upgrade your weapons and skills, yellow to refill your health, and blue for magic. New to Genma Onimusha are green orbs. When you collect five of them, you will do double damage and regenerate health for a brief period of time. But be careful, as demons can absorb these as well and become stronger. So get ready to play Tug of War. Speaking of new stuff, Genma Onimusha sports new areas, new costumes and armor, different enemy placements, and three-tier charge attacks. There's also a new boss in the form of a little geisha doll. Oh, 
Oh, how cute! Oh, come on now, how in the world is that little doll even? Jesus Christ! I WANNA GO out! If there are any gripes that I'd have with this game is that it's really tough. So tough that if you die a few times in the beginning, it'll unlock an easy mode for you. Yes, I used it. Don't judge me. The graphics of Genma Onimusha get a nice upgrade thanks to the Xbox's hardware, and it still looks great today, with disturbing yet beautiful pre-rendered backgrounds and well-designed character models, especially in the cutscenes. Audio-wise, the music is really good and fits well with all the action going on. Plus, the voiceover isn't bad. I mean... It's not amazing, but it's better than the original Resident Evil. Men, fight and die with honor. Did it know humans could be such pests? <laughs> Where is the princess? Mm. Humans are more tasty when angry, and I haven't eaten in a while. <laughs> Also, for some reason, the game over screen is hilarious to me. Die! So that's Genma Onimusha. Is it collection worthy? Absolutely. In fact, I'd say this is the best version of Onimusha with a tougher challenge and new bonuses. On Amazon, it goes for about 20 bucks new and 2 bucks used, so it can be affordable. The only downside, though, is that this is the only Onimusha game on Xbox, so if you want to continue the story, you'll be powering on that PlayStation 2. But that's fine, as this is actually a great series. It's still cool, though, that at least the big green got one of Capcom's survival horror games. Well, and with that, this is the Dalek Popka saying if you want to play retro, try going green. I'll see you next time.